Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Z Motorsports shop and channel. Um, those of you who've been following along know that I've uh, recently put a 6.2 liter um, GM LS engine, which is the Gen 4 engines, um, and a 6L80 E transmission into my 2011 Jeep Wrangler. Now, that being said, the last couple of it's, everything's been running perfectly other than the last couple of tanks I've been getting an intermittent uh, check engine light which has been a P0442 um, which is a small evap leak which is usually 20 small they, 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 they indicate small as 20 thousandths or less um, leak in the evap system so I went through and checked all my connections obviously made sure everything was good there didn't see anything out of the ordinary so um, Tonight, I just thought I would do a quick diagnosis of it, and I wanted to take you along for the ride and kind of show you how, um, with the use of a smoke machine and a little bit of thinking through the process, how you can do a quick diagnosis of this. Now, um, this is not going to be typical of a Jeep. This is going to be more typical of a mid-2000s up into about a 12, 13 GM truck and SUV because that's basically what this whole powertrain is all the way back to the EVAP system. I grabbed the EVAP system, I grabbed everything out of a 2012 Denali um, and so basically that's what this system is. But the, the basic principles of how you diagnose and how you test are going to be the same regardless of what it is, whether it's a Jeep, a uh, Denali, a uh, you know, uh, a, uh, a Hyundai or a Subaru or whatever. So all this, I just want to kind of go over the basics and show you how, with the proper tools and this thinking through the process, um, how you can actually diagnose some of these EVAP problems. And let me be the first to say, I'm not a fan of EVAP problems. I've, I've, uh, I've got a love-hate relationship with EVAP problems. Um, you can make decent money at them, obviously. Um, and once you understand them, you kind of have to break the system down and see how they work but um, they can be a pain at times, especially the small leaks. The big leaks are usually easier to find. The small leaks are usually the ones that are hard to find. So um, anyway, that being said, let me go ahead and give you kind of an overview. So again, this is a General Motors um, 2012 Denali. So you're gonna have a purge valve up on the engine. You're gonna have a vent valve back at the tank. You're gonna have your um, charcoal canister. Now. On this one, it's still running the Jeep charcoal canister, but basically it's pretty close to the same design um, as a GM one, other than um, the Jeep one has what they call an eSIM, which is an evaporative evap system integrity monitor, which is basically a little shuttle, it's pretty primitive, it's a little shuttle valve that when pressure overcomes the spring, it vents, and with vacuum pulling on it, it purges when the purge valve opens. So pretty primitive. The GM system is much more um, accurate and much more advanced, I guess you could say, because it actually uses a, an FTP, which is a fuel tank pressure sensor, and then also has a vent valve and the purge valve. So, um, what I've done is, obviously, if, it's, if, it's, if you have a purge valve leaking, it's basically a vacuum leak. So, you're going to have some rough idling, you're going to have some characteristics, you know, uh, that roughly imitate a vacuum leak. So I kind of took it out of the equation the other night when I pulled it in because I went ahead and just pulled my, my line from my purge valve back to my tank. I pulled that off and threw a vacuum gauge on it. My thinking was is if the purge valve is leaking, I should show vacuum at that purge valve. So I pulled, I just used, I just grabbed my trusty vacuum gauge, hooked it up to the back of that purge valve with the engine running, and I saw zero on it. So I knew that the purge valve was holding, um, because the purge valve is always going to be closed unless it is being told to purge from the ECM. And at that point, um, I knew the purge valve was good. So what I did then is I went ahead and tapped into, I released, maybe, you know what, I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to bring you in and show you kind of what I did here to All set right. it up. So, Again, here's your purge valve right down underneath here. You can see the line that comes off and goes over to the intake right here. So there's the purge valve. Here is the line that connects to the back of the purge valve. So I disconnected that line and I stuffed a little hose in there. And then I have my adapter that goes over to my smoke machine. So that's where I'm injecting the smoke from 
because I know the purge valve is good, so I'm injecting it from there back to test the whole system. Okay, so I'm just using my uh, OTC leak tamer here, but it can, you can, any, of, any smoke machine is gonna basically function the same way. Um, they're usually gonna have, obviously, some of them are 110, but most of the ones I've seen are 12 volts. So I've got my cord hooked up to my battery here, got my remote switch, and I've also got a light hooked up to it. Um, this is actually kind of a nice light. I actually got that from, from Redline. It's not OTC, but it actually works pretty good. Um, and then they're gonna, a lot of them, most of them will have a gauge here. So you're gonna start seeing in a graduated scale here of what you're gonna be le what's gonna be leaking. So when I turn it on, right now you can see I've got power. When I turn it on, you're gonna see the smoke light come on and it's gonna start injecting smoke. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and you're gonna see the needle rise because I obviously have a leak. Then we're gonna go back and under the vehicle and start working our way back and determining where okay, this leak so is at. Okay, so at this point so everything's hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and hook the scanner up and then I'm gonna get the Jeep up in the air. Now a couple things when you're testing EVAP systems, especially on the ones that have small leaks. First of all, don't play with anything, especially the fuel filler cap. Um, those can leak and if you start disturbing it, you're gonna th throw off your, your, your test and that may have actually been the leak and if you've gone and taken it on and off, you may have corrected the leak and not know it. Uh, it might, you know, so it's, it's hard to say. So I don't like to touch anything that I don't have to. That's why I went ahead and kind of checked the purge valve ahead of time so I can inject smoke in and go ahead and, 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 and fi uh, fill the system with pressurized now, air. Now, another thing when you go back, so it, let's, let's think a system through here. So your purge valve is closed, so it's normally closed except for when this ECM is telling it to purge. Your vent valve is generally, is, is um, normally open. So when you're filling your fuel tank and so forth, it's venting through that vent valve. Otherwise you would have a, a no fill situation where it's not, letting vent, it's not venting the gas tank and you're gonna have a hard time fueling up. So your vent valve is this normally open. This particular one does not have a vacuum pump, like I said. So it'll close the va vent valve and it'll, which basically seals the system and then it'll monitor that fuel tank pressure sensor. So that's what's been going on. So obviously I've got something that's, that's changed in there in the last, uh, I've got about 4,100 miles on it now. So something in there has changed over the last couple tanks that has allowed me to have a minor, um, uh, small leak. So well, I'm gonna use the scanner. Now you can go in and pinch off the hose coming off of the vent valve. And that will, that will work. But I don't like to do that if I don't have to because you, you also at that point you're really not testing the vent valve so by closing it with the scanner with a scan tool you're basically simulating what that computer is doing when it goes in and simulates the test so what that's kind of what you want to do is you want to simulate the test what situations or what parameters are being set when the test is being ran and that will indicate that will help you diagnose it better to what is indicating what's going on that's throwing the code so I'm gonna go ahead and close the vent valve and that which should seal the system and then I'm gonna check my flow and, and then more importantly go underneath and watch for smoke. So let me go ahead and get the Jeep up in the air, scanner up and we'll proceed from All there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on now. So you'll see the smoke light will come on and you'll see this ball rise somewhere in this range with a small leak. Okay, it's smoking and it's, it's actually pegged the meter out. So, hope that shows up. Yeah, it's actually pegged the meter out. So now we're gonna go underneath and start looking for smoke. And I'm gonna take my handy dandy little light here. Oh, actually I'm gonna go around and show you on the scanner how I've closed the vent This valve. is a Modus Ultra by Snap-on. So any of your um, bi-directional scanners, you should be able to do output tests. So I've gone in here to the vehicle. Uh, let me just back up here to the start. So I've got a 2012 Denali four-wheel drive L94. Um, I'm going to go down here to functional tests, and then I'm gonna go down here to output controls. So if you just have a read-only scanner, you probably are not gonna be able to perform this, but you wanna look for your outputs. Um, go into that. Okay, so then I'm just gonna scroll through these, this menu, till I find what I'm looking for. EVAP purge seal, EVAP vent solenoid, open and close, there we go. So now I'll click on that. Um, Okay, so right now it's in, the, it's in the static position, which the vent valve is normally open, so it's non-energized and it's venting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to 
close it. And I just heard it click, so it's not venting at this point. You can see right here, not venting. So now we'll go underneath and watch for smoke. So some of this may or may not show up, but I've, I've checked from ba hoses back to my EVAP canister. So there's my EVAP canister. There's my eSIM, which is the Jeep, and here's my vent valve for GM. So I don't see any smoke anywhere. I've gone up and checked by the fuel filler cap. I've checked all my connections. Um, I've checked off coming down off the back of the motor, wondering if maybe I've heated up a line or something and melted through. Everything looks good up there, no smoke anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead just for the hell of it and pull the hose off of that vent valve and see what's going on. And bingo, look at that. I hope that shows up, but you can actually hear that and see it. So that valve is actually closed and there's smoke coming out of it. So I look over at my meter or my, on my EVAP machine and it is still pegged wide open. So I'm gonna throw a cap on that vent valve now, which will simulate it being closed and go over and watch my gauge on the Vat on the machine and see if that needle start, or see if that, that ball starts dropping. If so, we've just identified our problem in, in about a whole 10 minutes um, of diagnosing, probably less than that. So let me go ahead and throw a cap on that. And let's go over to the machine. All right. The needles or the balls dropping, coming down quite a bit as it's pressurizing that system. So I think we found our leak. You're watching, it's coming down as soon as it drops off to nothing. Which it's just about there. As it's pressurizing that tank and basically the whole EVAP system. And that ball is dropped down to nothing. Boom, there's our leak. So we have a bad vent valve. Um, obviously when it goes closed, it's not closing all the way. So that's how quick and simple you can diagnose an EVAP leak. And now granted, they're not all this simple, but that's just basically how using a smoke machine, knowing how the system works, thinking through the process, how quickly you can diagnose um, some of these EVAP okay, problems. Okay, so I ran to uh, my local Napa there and picked up a new vent valve. Now this is the GM vent valve, which is basically the line coming in here and then the line going out is into this little filter per se and there's a mounting tab on the back side so if you're run if you're working on a gm vehicle which is what this drivetrain is this is what you're after right this is what you're going to be using my situation is a little different so i'm actually going to release the little locking tab Release a little locking tab and basically turn this a quarter of a turn and pop the vent valve. That's basically the little nugget that I'm after right there. So it sits in the vehicle like this. The line coming out of the EVAP canister is going to go to this side because your connector is going to be facing the connector is going to be facing the the reset the receiving portion is going to be facing down. The plug wiring is going to go up. The side with the O-ring, the side that's sealed to this canister, side with the O-ring is going to be going out towards the outside of the vehicle. So that's going to be the, that's the hose we pulled off for testing. That's where I'm going to put this in, back in, and that's where that hose will go. The other one will go on the other side and then the connection. So let's go underneath and replace this. All right. So I've, I've, I've went ahead and hit the scanner and basically vented this valve. So we're now going to undo the electrical connector, release the little tab and pull down on the connector. You grab a nut driver. Grab nut driver and undo the connection on that side. Pull that vent valve out. Let 
Once you verify that you have the, the correct one, go ahead and put the new vent valve in. Again, valve facing up, connector facing down. Let's go ahead and tighten this clamp. Now, we've obviously put a new part in. So in our minds, we should be thinking, problem fixed. I'm a firm believer of trust, but verify. So we're gonna go through and perform the same test now. And see if, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this right here, the camera set up on that. I'm gonna go ahead and close the, I'm gonna have, go ahead and turn the smoke machine on first which you'll see smoke coming out of there. Then I'm gonna go through the scanner and close it and we should see the smoke stop. Okay, it's smoking. And we'll wait for it to come out really good here so you can still show up. It's gotta fill that tank and the lines and everything. Okay, so there it goes. So it's smoking pretty good there. Hope that shows up on video. that's showing up some of these lights let me use the actual yellow light some lights work better than there we go now you can see it this, this more more yellow light helps illuminate that much better than the LED so now I'm going to reach over with the um, uh, scanner and close that, boom. Closed it and you saw the smoke stopped. That was a little residual there, but basically it stopped. So we're good, problem fixed. Now go ahead and put this hose back on and button it up under All here. All right, and now everything's hooked up and you can see that power's on, smoke is being applied and the ball is down at zero. So that is system is sealed tight with the new vent valve in place. Problem fixed, diagnosed, repaired, and verified. Um, not counting running parts, probably half All an right. hour. So that pretty much concludes um, my evap leak. And I hopefully this, hopefully this was in somewhat informative as far as how to use a smoke machine. Um, they're a great piece of equipment. The prices have really come down on them. When I bought this one, shit, 15 years ago, it was a hell of a lot more than they are now. Um, Redline is a, is a very popular brand out there now. Um, like I said, I've had this OTC for probably 15 years and I don't use it a ton, but when I do use it, it's, it's an invaluable tool and a, a very much an asset to the shop. So thank you for watching. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.